Hello, you my wonderful people. Welcome back. This is part two of the process of creating an isometric animation. In the first part, we illustrated this lovely scene, and now we're going to bring it to life in After Effects. This will be an easy tutorial, no plugins required, no cameras, and we won't be rebuilding anything in 3D space. This is still 2D animation, but with the illusion of isometric depth. First, let's get our file ready in Illustrator. We'll need to separate all the shapes that we want to animate and place each one on a separate layer. As you can see, I'm also keeping the isometric rectangular grid, which we'll use as a guide later in After Effects. I like to separate even the small decorative lines too, so I can animate them individually. One of the most common types of animation I see is scaling with a little bounce at the end. Well, that's still an option, but personally, I also love path animations very much and trimming strokes. So that's what we will do here. Let's start with the cloud. Using a guide layer, I draw a shape that will be used as a mat to reveal the cloud. I also like to add a little line at the bottom of the cloud that appears and then kind of scales down and disappears when the cloud is fully revealed. Imagine dragging something out of the water. There is that moment when the object breaks the surface and you can see a little line or ripple. That's the effect I'm going for here. When the cloud stops moving, I animate the lines on it using the trim path effect. The user avatar appears in the same way as the cloud. The only difference is that the avatar is made up of three separate shapes and I add a slight time offset between them so that they move one after another and this gives this nice layered motion. Now let's move on the lock and key animation. The key scales up at the beginning and Here's an important detail, I'm not animating the scale property. Instead, I'm animating the path itself, because this way the stroke width stays consistent, which just looks cleaner. Once the key reaches its full size, I animate the tip of the key using a guide layer to make sure I stay within isometric perspective. At the same time, I animate the lock opening. Again, it's just simple path animation, nothing complicated. The bar is revealed in the similar way I usually animate backwards, meaning I first set keyframes for the final state of the element, then move backwards in time and adjust their position. In this case, I move the path so it forms almost a circle and then I scale that circle down. I also like to animate the fill color. It's such a small thing to do and really easy, but it adds energy. I type color in the search bar and then select the color I want to animate. In my case, it's light blue and change it every two frames. Then I right click and choose toggle hold keyframe. So the colors switch instantly without blending. It gives this nice um, flickering effect. In the middle of the scene, I need to replace the lock with a shield. For that, I use a simple match cut technique. Both the lock and the shield move downwards in the same direction, and I replace one with the other at the fastest point of the motion. That way, the transition kind of feels seamless. I use the same trick for the avatar and the computer. They move the same way, and one replaces the other mid-motion. The key here is to keep the direction and timing consistent between the two elements. And that's basically it. I've shown you all the main techniques I used for this scene. I can add more elements and make this scene even more complex, but the foundation of all these movements will be the same. The After Effects project file is available on my Patreon if you're curious to explore it further. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!